Hello. In part 12 of this series, we paid a virtual visit to Haddon Chapel to pull together some of the themes that we'd covered. I'm going to do the same in this video with a look at the Church of St Michael and All Angels at Lyndhurst. It's the third church on the site, begun in 1858, largely built by the following year and completed in 1870. Designed by William White in Gothic Revival style, but using modern materials. And in the last video, we talked about the Gothic Revival, looking back to the churches of the medieval period. It reflects the theology and the ecclesiology of much Victorian thought, in which the Oxford movement, also known as the Tractarians, were influential. The Church of England, trying to combat the rise of nonconformity by returning the church to its roots, emphasising that although it's Anglican, there was an unbroken tradition from the Reformation. It's the emergence of high church, a kind of Anglo-Catholicism, an expression of the passion associated with the medieval church. And Lyndhurst in the mid-19th century was newly popular as a resort in the New Forest. The architect William White was a pupil of George Gilbert Scott, but heavily influenced by the designs of William Butterfield, who took inspiration from medieval precedents, but reinterpreted them and used modern materials. And William White set up his own business based in Truro. Most of his work is in the south and southwest of England. Outside the church is polychrome, brick and stone. This is the entrance and the north portal. And I think you can see from this that White paid great attention to detail. The interior is predominantly red brick and wood, showing the materials honestly, very much an, an arts and crafts ideal. The nave arcade of Gothic pointed arches has patterned brickwork and it's set on brick piers with clustered and polished Purbeck marble shafts. The capitals show different leaves, foliated, freeform, not classical. The roof corbels are carved with the heads of various leading lights of the Reformation and above them are life-sized angel musicians on roof brackets and we looked at angel roofs in part six. The stained glass represents the best of Victorian arts and crafts. Lots of windows by William Morris and Co still in their early years. We talked about their first stained glass commission for G.F. Bodley at Selsley in Gloucestershire in 1861 in the last video. 1861, the year that Morris and Co were formed. The windows here date to 1862 and 1863. Thereby, Morris himself, of course, Edward Byrne Jones, Dante Gabriel Rossetti and Philip Webb. There's also work by other leading stained glass producers of the period in the church, including Charles Kemp and Clayton and Bell. The east window is by Morris and Co. It represents the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem as described in Revelations. The west window is by Charles Kemp. This was added in 1903. There's another William Morris window in the south transept. There are three angels in the upper tracery that are to designs by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. And the four lights show, reading from left to right, the cattle of Ajalon from the book of Joshua, Elijah on Mount Carmel from the first book of Kings, the stoning of St Stephen from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, and St Peter's escape from prison in Acts chapter 12. There's a bearded man being grabbed by the collar in the lower left window. And I think this is a self-portrait. I think this is William Morris. Elsewhere, there's a window with angels by Edward Byrne Jones. Also by Morris, you have this window showing Hannah. This is from the book of Samuel. Hannah, one of the two wives of Elkanah, his favorite wife, but childless. And she prays at the temple and promises that if she's able to have a son, she will dedicate him to the service of God and the result is Samuel. And she then goes on to have five more children, three boys and two girls. This very vibrant William Morris window 
is Mary Magdalene. There are six female figures in small windows in the North Isle by Morris and Co. And the figures are the Virgin Mary, her cousin Elizabeth, Hannah again, Rachel, one of Jacob's two wives, St Anne, the mother of Mary, and St Monica, all in light coloured clothing which makes them stand out against a lush background of New Forest vegetation. This is the Te Deum window. It's in the north transept and this is by Clayton and Bell. It's inspired by the words of the canticle from the morning prayer called the Te Deum and it shows assorted apostles and prophets and martyrs. And among the figures we have St Peter with his keys, Catherine with her wheel, Jacob and his ladder and St Lucy with her eyes on a plate. St Lucy, patron saint of the blind, martyred in Syracuse during the persecutions of Diocletian in 304 and blinded according to legend before execution. Frederick Layton, later Lord Layton, President of the Royal Academy of Art, painted a large fresco of the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. He painted this as the final fittings were going up around him between 1862 and 64. The story appears in the Gospel according to St Matthew chapter 25. And Leighton did this work for cost. All he was paid was the cost of the materials. The bishop disapproved. He thought too colourful. The painted church was just too Roman Catholic. But the parishioners overruled him and it went ahead. And the result is one of Leighton's key large-scale work. And the characters are said to have been based on Lyndhurst locals. The mural runs the width of the chancel and forms a reridos, a backdrop to the altar. And note the step progression to the altar, very high church. Now also at the church there is the last resting place of Alice Hargreaves, Nee Liddle. This is the Alice who inspired Lewis Carroll and Alice Hargreaves lived for much of her adult life in Lyndhurst. Lyndhurst Church, just one example of the treasures that are our parish churches. Now next time I'm going to turn the clock back and look at Norman church architecture. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.